What you guys, when should you upgrade your PC or replace it? That's what we're going to be looking at today. Now you may see a lot of YouTubers creating and building new PCs all the time, and some people just can't afford it. So when is the right time for you to build a new PC and what should you build and how much should you spend? This is what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. But first, let's have a quick word from today's sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro OEM key, then head over to CD Key Sales. Once you've created an account, click the Buy Now button on your Windows 10 Pro OEM key. Use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and then submit your order. Once you've submitted your order, you will be sent your product key and then you can use that product key to activate your version of Windows. Links are in the video description. So first off, let's talk about uh, the time to upgrade. So the time to upgrade your PC is when you start noticing that it impacts your day-to-day -day use of your PC and your workflow, and you just can't seem to get things done, or it takes an absolute age to do anything on that PC. That is the time to uh, start thinking about replacing components or replacing the PC altogether. So first thing to do is work out what you're actually doing on the computer. If you're just surfing the web, then obviously you don't need a super high-end system. If you're performing uh, very heavy tasks like uh, photo editing or graphic design or sort of video editing constantly, 4K and things like that, then obviously you're going to need to start thinking about uh, how long that's taking and whether you can improve uh, these things by upgrading your system. Now, whether you're playing AAA titles with stunning 4K visuals is also going to take a impact on that old system if it will even run 4K uh, games or AAA listed games at high frame rates. So these are the things you have to work out. Also, what monitor you're using is going to be another factor. If you're running a 4K a high-end uh, monitor or you're using some 1080p uh, monitor, then that also reflects on what graphics card you're going to need and other things like that. So what you need to do first is work out what components you can upgrade and whether it's worth upgrading them or whether it's worth building a new PC. This is the first thing you need to do. So do you uh, have a low end chip in there like an i3 and can you upgrade to an i5 or an i7 or an i9 or something along those lines? Or if you're using a lower end Ryzen 3 processor, you may want to go up the food chain a little bit and get a Ryzen 5, a Ryzen 7, or something along those lines. So once you work that out, you only need to go up in the CPU processing power depending on the sort of work that you're doing. If you're just surfing the web, obviously you don't need a Ryzen 9 processor. If you're gaming, you're not going to need a Ryzen 9 processor. You're just going to need something like a Ryzen 5 processor or something along those lines. So work out what you roughly need it for, and then you can work out what chip you've got and whether you're going to gain anything from upgrading the CPU. Also take into account how old that CPU is. If it's a, you know, a 10 year old CPU, then I would say it's probably not worth upgrading and you're probably better off building a brand new PC unless you're just surfing the web. So let's move on to the hard drive. If you're using a mechanical drive, it might be time to start thinking about upgrading to something a little faster, like a SSD or a NVMe drive if your system supports it. Now, obviously, if your PC is super old, then it's not going to have the M.2 slot where you can use this style of drive. You may need to use the uh, SATA SSD type uh, drives in your computer instead. Now, you can get riser cards that support these types of drives. But again, realistically, you're not going to get the speeds that you can get from a modern day computer from them. So they will be restricted in somewhat, especially with the data bus on that uh, motherboard as well. Now, these two and a half inch SSD drives, you can either buy expensive ones or cheap ones. And uh, really, depending on what your budget is and what you're actually going to be doing with it, uh, will determine on what one you should buy. Obviously, if you are doing a lot of hardcore workloads on that drive, so if you are going to be doing, like, for instance, video editing, and it's all going to be done on that actual drive, then you want to get yourself a decent branded high terabyte written drive for that particular workflow because it will do a massive wear and tear on that drive. And especially if you're using those cheaper drives, they will probably end up failing on you 
uh, because they're not designed for that type of workload. Other than that, uh, you need to also work out, is it worth upgrading or is it worth just saving your money and building a brand new PC? These are the things that you have to work out for yourself because at the end of the day, it's your money that you're spending and uh, there's going to come a point when that computer has become end of life and you need to start thinking about uh, the future and upgrading and saving your money. I've seen people plummet so much money into a really old laptop or an old PC trying to keep it going and it ends up spending them an absolute fortune on it when they could have put that to a brand new computer. Now, if you need loads of storage, then obviously upgrading uh, storage to SSDs or NVMe type drives can cost a lot of money. They are pretty expensive still for large drives. Uh, so if you're looking for something to replace, i.e. just the main Windows drive and you only need a small drive, then by all means, that would be pretty reasonable. But once you start stepping up into the terabytes, that's when things start changing and they can cost quite a lot of money. So mechanical drives are still very useful for uh, archiving or storage uh, in 2022 still, I think. So let's talk about the power supply. You're not going to gain any performance uh, from upgrading your power supply. But if you are looking at building a brand new computer, as long as the power draw is not going above your recommendations and you bought a very good power supply previously, you may still be able to get away with using your power supply in your next build as long as there's enough power there. And this is the thing you need to uh, remember. Power supplies can last a very long time and uh, you don't need to replace them all the time unless there's some necessary need to, i.e. you need more power draw. For instance, something like this is a 650 watt power supply and on the 12 volt rail, you're getting 649 uh, 0.2 watts that's giving you virtually the whole power supply uh, output on that 12 volt rail now as long as your graphics card is not asking for more than a 650 watt uh, power draw then you should be fine to continue to use this in your next build i'd always tell people stop buying those cheap power supplies uh, like the colink and other types of cheap power supplies you see being recommended on the internet they are cheap nasty and they're not worth buying you're going to end up having one blow on you and you're going to end up losing all your components so always buy a really good power supply another thing i see people do is either buying a cheap power supply uh, for their build because they've run out of money or they end up over buying where they're buying something like a thousand watts when they don't really need a thousand watt power supply so what I recommend is always buy a good known quality power supply. There's plenty of power supply tier lists out there that will tell you exactly what a good power supply is and what a rubbish power supply is. If you're looking for a power supply, buy a good, well-known, trusted brand and make sure you buy one that you want, i.e. modular, semi-modular or just your, you know, your default type of power supply where all the wadger cables are molded to the actual uh, power supply itself another thing to look into is power how much power do you need i always see people either over buying on on power supplies where they only need 500 watts and they go and buy a thousand watt power supply or they go and buy a underrated power supply for instance they need 500 watts and they go and buy a 450 watt or a 500 watt and it's making the power supply have to work super hard uh, to deliver good quality power so always give yourself a bit of headroom. If you need 500 watts, buy 650 watts. Gives you a little bit of a headroom of 150 watts. Make sure you calculate all your power correctly and you should be okay. And if you're using one of these older types of Dell Optiplexes or you've been watching some of these uh, old HPs and Dells on the internet where they've come straight out of an office and you're putting a graphics card in there, just make sure that you are uh, replacing the power supply and don't use... Uh, for instance, a high drawing power graphics card in there and pushing the limits of that power supply in there. If they've got a low wattage on them, then all you're going to do is end up making that power supply get super hot. And even if it works, it can catch fire and you have to be super careful when you're pushing uh, power supplies like that uh, with underrated power and you're putting more, asking more power of that power supply. It might work for a while, but you're going to end up with something going bang or catching fire. So be very, very careful.
Now, if you're on a super tight budget and you don't have a lot of money to spend and you're quite happy with what your computer can do, but you just want to make it look a bit more modern, maybe you want a bit of bling, then you can get some power supply extension cables and you can also buy some uh, fans, maybe some RGB fans if you want RGB. Maybe you want to get a new CPU cooler that's got RGB on it. Maybe change out the uh, air cooler for a 240mm RGB rad and you've also can change the case. These things don't cost an absolute fortune and it can give your PC a new lease of life. Now, if it's super old, i.e. 10 years plus or even older, then obviously RGB is going to be a little bit more difficult because your motherboard probably won't support uh, RGB. But there is ways around it and you can still get some RGB effect in that PC to make it look a bit more modern. Now that tied in with a few little upgrades like maybe a memory upgrade, maybe a CPU upgrade, or maybe some sort of uh, SSD added, it can give that PC a new lease of life, especially if you're not asking too much of it. Now, if you obviously uh, are struggling with what it can actually do, then maybe it's time to build a brand new PC or buy a brand new PC. So what about RAM upgrades? Well, if you've already got 16 gigabytes of RAM, I don't think adding more RAM is going to make your computer experience any better. Now, if you're doing video editing and things like that, then maybe adding 32 gigabytes of RAM might make the experience a little bit better than 16 gigabytes. Uh, but other than that, I would say you're just wasting your money if you're just using it for general use, i.e. surfing the web, playing games. Adding more RAM like that to playing games is just a bit of a waste in my personal opinion. So let's talk about GPU upgrades. This is probably one of the most dramatic upgrades you can do if you're a gamer. You're going to get more FPS with the better graphics card you put in there. As long as you've got a decent power supply uh, to drive that graphics card, then you should be able to upgrade your GPU. Now, obviously, it's going to depend on the size of case for the type of graphics card you can put in there. Obviously, if you're in a low-profile system, that's going to limit your graphic graphics card upgrades. And if you're in a really small, tight uh, type of MIDI case, then you're just going to have to make sure you get the measurements right for some of those bigger, larger cards out there on the market. Now, a good thing about a GPU upgrade is if you've got an older system and you're just playing 1080p games, then, you know, you can upgrade your GPU and get a really good experience from it. Even some of the older systems will allow you to put a better graphics card in there so you can play modern day games. The only downfall side is, is once your PC becomes to the point of too old, then it's not going to be really worth upgrading. So how old is too old? Well, it depends what components you've got inside the computer and what you're trying to do with your computer. If your PC is so old that the new components are not compatible, or your hard drive is uh, like an IDE I drive, or your PSU supports a 20-pin connector, then the PC is getting pretty old, and you're probably best to look for a, a new PC. Maybe some of the components in there are unable to support the latest versions of operating system that Microsoft has to offer. Now, you might be able to install Linux on it and use it just as a surfing the web box or something like that or do something else with it. But when it comes to Windows, you're going to be restricted uh, because of some of the requirements that are, are needed for some of the operating systems out there. Also, some software and some games may not be compatible with that old system. So you have to look at how old your system is and work out what sort of hardware you've got in there and whether there's any sort of upgrade path for that system. Some of these pre-built systems are proprietary and there's no upgrade path for them. Some of the older systems may already be maxed out already where the motherboard has got the maximum amount of memory or the maximum CPU you can put in that actual motherboard. So there's no upgrade path for it, which means you're going to have to build yourself a new computer or buy a pre-built system. So it's pretty simple, really. And if you want a uh, sort of a nice looking PC, then you can go out and buy PC parts uh, that all tie in together and get a nice looking PC like something like this, where it's all uh, tricked out, all white. And again, if you want something that's just plain Jane with no RGB, you can do that also. So it just depends on what you're trying to achieve with your PC build. So if you're a gamer and you want to play games, then work out what monitor you want to use first and how much your budget is. 
If your budget is pretty small, then stick to 1080p gaming and get yourself a, a lower end mid range graphics card and you will be able to still enjoy 1080p gaming with pretty reasonable frame rates. But if you want to play games on a 2K or 4K uh, high end, high refresh rate monitor, then you're going to have to start thinking about buying a much more higher end uh, hardware uh, to run that. And that's the thing you have to work out. Another thing, if you're just looking for something to browse the web, you can buy pretty much a cheap uh, setup with onboard graphics. You don't need to buy a graphics card and you can still build one of those pretty cheap today. You don't need to splash the cash out too much for something like like browsing uh, emails and things like that, watching YouTube. It's not going to cost that much money. But if you're looking to, say, for instance, get into streaming and you want to have a separate PC for the gaming and also a separate PC to stream, then that's obviously going to cost a fair bit of money. Also, if you're looking for a high-end uh, video editing system, then again, you might have to splash the cash a little bit on that. So it just depends on what you're trying to do with your computer. Now, if you don't know how to build a custom PC, but you really do want one and you live in the UK and you will be happy to buy the parts, pay the shipping and pay the insurance on the shipping, I would happily build that PC for you for free. If you're interested in join our Discord server and contact me over there and we can talk in private in private chat and I will be happy to talk you through the process. Anyway, with that said, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this video has been a use to you. If it has, then give the video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments section below what you've got as a PC right now and whether you are looking for upgrading or maybe building a new PC. Quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall see you on the Discord server for a chat. Take it easy. Have a lovely weekend. Bye for now.